Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This video is on the GAN 14. So we have a sample of the GAN 14 Maglev UV. We're gonna be showing you guys this cube, taking it apart, comparing it to the other double digit GAN models. We'll figure out whether or not this is a cube that you should get. Just full disclosure, I already unboxed this because I wanted to stream on it. We do live stream every week, Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So I'm gonna replicate the unboxing experience, but we've already unboxed this. It comes with a card. The box is really easy to open because you pull this tab here. This is really nice. Sometimes you have to like wiggle the box or something. So then we have the cube and the accessory kit. I have a feeling I'm going to need to read the manual for this. Uh, here we have a GAN pouch. This is really nice. And we have the cube. This opens pretty easily and the components are on the underside of the box so this is also really creative so this cube is available for pre-order at thecubego.com it's 87.99 weighs 71 grams and like all the other GAN cubes it's 56 millimeters and it has basically adjustable anything there are so many things you can do and GAN is really really pushy with the whole like over a thousand configurations we really want you to know that we're going to just see how that works but that's the basic info and it's expected to ship the third week of August from the cubicle so if you want to pre-order it, we'll have a link for you in the description. If you're not sure, just continue watching the video and we'll figure it out together. This is the cube. The out of the box, I'm just gonna summarize my experience on the cube. It was actually pretty bad. The cube is really fast and unstable out of the box with no lube. You overturn a ton and I couldn't really cube continuously on it. I would like constantly stop and lock up. But then I lubed this cube. I used silicone and uh, FZ-COM. That's the new lube that we have. So this is after some setup and uh, tuning. And the feel is now, it's pretty nice. Uh, the turn is sharp and defined. Like I can tell where I'm turning the cube. It's not over looped, so it's still a little bit clicky. And I can pretty much turn at normal TPS. So the M slices are clean and basically this cube performs the way I want it to. I don't have any turning problems or anything like I did in the beginning. So now let's take it apart and look at all the tech. So I think there are two places you can adjust the cube. Uh, one is like inside the cube and the other is under the cap. Sorry, I forgot the GAN fire hydrant. So this is this tool that you can use to adjust the uh, centers. So the fat part at the end gets the gear on the bottom and this part hits the adjustment system here. So for clarity, let's open the pamphlet. It says the top is elasticity and the bottom is tension. Okay, that makes sense. So basically I cheated and Steven told me uh, the settings that he likes and I like Steven's settings a lot. So he has the elasticity set at two and the tension set at five. I felt like he just shared the cheat codes of a video game on the stream with me and I just like plugged it in and the cube was really good. So definitely try that. And we're gonna close that up and take the cube apart. So you can see that the cube has a magnetic core as always. You can actually adjust a lot of the settings in here. What can you do? You can change this. Ooh, there are three levels. So the corner adjustment, that's something that we're very used to. Uh, this is existing on other GAN cubes. Uh, this one is new, so you can adjust the, uh, the magnet over here. I suppose if you move it down, it changes the position so that it's not directly on top of the corner magnet. So that's really interesting. So these are the settings I have right now. These seem to make sense for me, so I'm not going to change them, but I am going to try to plug in one of these guys. Oh, <laughs> you use the GAN fire hydrant to get this out. Oh, that was, that was kind of cool. The fire hydrant is so good. Okay, so then we can put these in. There we go. Let's see what that does to the cube. Yeah, I mean, I only put it in one of them. Should I put it in all of them? Just for the video, we're going to try. I also find the GAN fire hydrant just really amusing in general, so. Okay. So how does it feel if one side has it and the other side doesn't? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. All right, let's feel it. Yep. Yeah, it's noticeable. Wait, so the yellow side is the stronger magnet? I think so. Does the white side feel stronger? Does it really? Are you sure these are stronger magnets or are they weaker? Let's let's find out, let's find out. Do we have like a magnet or anything magnetic? That oh no, we have this, we have this. This is extremely unscientific by the way. Okay.
this feels a little stronger. So th that's our like extremely unscientific way of figuring out that this is a bit stronger. We will keep replacing them. Okay, so we are going to be organized and we're going to neatly put these back before we lose them. Oh, they're kind of a pain to put back. <laughs> oh, I'm losing them. I'm losing them. <laughs> okay, forget it. So now we've played with all the adjustments. Now we're going to address a very big topic, which is like, what's the actual difference between this and the other GAN cubes? So this is the 12, this is the 13. And uh, as you guys know, the 12 is really popular among competitive cubers. I think most of the top guys that use GAN are all using the 12. They've kind of declined to use the 13. I think Nam was the only person who really used the 13 and then he went back to the 12, I believe. Really begs the question, like, what about this cube? What a lot of people have been saying is this feels kind of like a better GAN 13. It has more piece to piece contact. So the 12 has some sort of empty space in the middle where you feel like the cube is crispy and clicky. Like I can feel like the tactility of this cube, but this cube feels like there's more contact on the inside and the contact is continuous, kind of like 13. It's not as heavy as the 13, so I definitely think this feels like a more refined 13. I'm not really sure if people will switch from 12 to the 14. This release came kind of at an awkward time around Worlds, and I don't think people are that interested in changing their hardware so suddenly, but this is definitely a flagship cube that's usable in a competitive environment. Uh, let's take a look at the pieces. So. There's this difference. I just assume that the core juts out more in this model. So the radius of the core magnets is bigger on the 14. And then here we have the corner. This also, like the, the radius of the magnets is much larger. I can't really notice too many other differences. Uh, granted, I'm not an engineer, but the biggest takeaway I have opening and comparing these puzzles is that the magnetic radius of the core magnet system is larger on this cube. So now let's do some solves on the 14. And while I do that, I'll kind of explain how I view maining this puzzle and my recommendations for whether you should get it or not. So I've done a few hundred solves on the GAN 14. I streamed on Wednesday and today we're filming on Friday. I did another stream and I did more solves in between. I did everything on the cube and uh, I think I'm in a pretty good position to give it a review, at least based on my personal opinion. So I think number one is uh, I come from the Waylong V9, which is my current main. And the first thing I learned was to not treat this like a Waylong V9. I think I got more out of it when I slowed down my turning and tried to use my brain more than spam. I was really spammy on the Waylong V9 and I got some really good times, but I felt like I got better times here if I just slowed down and been more deliberate with the turns. Uh, I still don't fully trust the M slices on this cube. There are times when I get like a U-perm like this in the back and I'm trying to like do it fast and I lock up and I'm not really sure what happens after the M2. There are definitely still instances where my turning fails on this cube. I am not sure if I'll ever get used to a GAN cube like this, but you know, the cube is definitely better than the out of the box experience, which is pretty rough. It's like really fast and uncontrollable, but if you get it set up, it does actually perform quite well. It just takes a long time to actually do that because there are so many settings and so many variables that you can control. So I guess that brings me to the next point, which is coming from the Waylong V9 Special Edition, I come from a cube that was basically ready to use outside of the box and it was a flagship. And I felt the simplicity of that cube to be really attractive because it was not as expensive. It's exactly half the price of this cube. And it basically took me a minute to figure out that I needed to put some heavy lube in it. So I just jammed some weight four in there and I started setting really good times uh, on the cube. Whereas this one, I needed to figure out how to adjust four different variables in a bunch of different directions. And I ended up cheating off of Steven. Thank you again, Steven. So I think the adjustment process for this cube is quite long. And this is one of those cubes that gives you a problem when you get the cube in the sense that you want to do something with the cube to make it better. And it's your job to solve that problem and to, you know, use the, your creativity and your settings and your loops to make the cube good. I have no doubt a lot of people are going to make this cube good and use it. It's just the path there is very individualized and maybe more than some people want to put into their cube. 
like me. I just want to use my cube. I think overall, this is better than the GAN 13. I wouldn't say it's better than the GAN 12. I think the GAN 12 has a really huge following and rightfully so because it's an incredible cube. And because it's older, the GAN 12 is actually cheaper than ever before. So I think uh, that's still a really good source of cube if you want a GAN cube. Um, this cube is better than the 13, so I th if I had a choice, I would pick this over the 13 any day. Definitely, I think this is one of those cubes that you should try before you buy so that you know what you're getting into and if you're happy with uh, an $88 cube that you can customize in pretty much any way possible. Uh, the lube I used was some Weight 4, which is the same lube I used for my Whalen V9. And this FZ Calm lube, it makes this cube really smooth and comfortable and I started doing way better after I used this lube. Really recommend it for a cube like this. It's very comfortable and the turning became a lot quieter and smoother. But yeah, overall, I can't say this is mind blowing, but it's also not a failed release. It's better than the 13. They are moving forward again, but maybe it's because the 13 was moving backwards. Who knows? Um, but at least I know that we're moving forward. And if you have a chance, definitely try it. It's 100% worth trying. And for some people in that group of people who try it, I think some people will really like it. All right, so hopefully you found this video useful. I did so many solves on this cube just to get the hang of it to see if I could figure out what settings I liked, and I'm really glad I did. And hopefully you can try this someday too. See you later.